Okay. Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much for coming today. My name is Abby Leonard. I'm the first vice president here at the FCCJ. Um, today, we are very pleased to welcome this panel to talk about the Learn and Earn program, which has brought more than 700 Bhutanese students to Japan. But now some participants, including some of the people we, uh, we'll hear from today, um, are saying it was a scam in which students were forced to repay large debts by working here in Japan. The issue got more attention, tragically, after the apparent suicide in December of a 24-year-old Bhutanese man. So I want to give our panelists plenty of time to talk, so I'm just going to leave it with a short introduction. Um, and after each of them speak, they're going to answer, um, answer your questions. And it will all be in English today. Um, so let me introduce them. Um, first, Nagwang Tobge, who's the legal officer of the Parents Committee of the Learn and Earn program. Do we actually have these? We have these flipped, right? Your name tags? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Just so, we, just so everyone is clear who is who. Um, then Sonam uh, Chering Dendup, uh, president of the parents, yeah, presidents of the parents committee of the Learn and Earn program. And then Yumiko Khan, representative of Nature and Humans Japan, an NGO here. Am I right that you're switched, or are your names correct? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's yeah. correct. They're correct. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're fine. OK. Um, so um, first, uh, we're going to hear from uh, Sonam Chering Dendap. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you very much. OK. Uh, first of all, um, I would like to uh, thank uh, our ma'am, Yumiko Khan, for arranging everything. and. Uh, and I would like to thank all the uh, FCCG members, and uh, and I want to thank you f for all of you for coming here and uh, to meeting with us. And uh, now to tell something about why the purpose we are here is uh, uh, about the learn and earn the uh, program, which uh, the uh, Bhutanese uh, agency that have sent uh, almost. Uh, more than 700 students here. So uh, I, uh, we, we had a lot of complaint that the students, those who are sent here, are facing a lot of trouble and uh, difficulties. And uh, when uh, they were sent here by the Bhutan agent, uh, they were brief uh, saying that uh, they will get the, every student was given a uh, seven lakhs loan, every loan from the government for each student. So they told the students that uh, when they come here in Japan after, uh, you know, from the school or they can work and they can, they said they, they, they can work for uh, uh, part time or they can work two works, which is uh, later we found it is illegal to work at two hours. They are, they are actually allowed to work only 28 week, and uh, and I believe that they said that uh, they can make a lot of money and then uh, pay the loan within a year or half. Actually, the loan term is for five years. So uh, the students here and the uh, after that when they reach here, it is totally different for what the uh, the agent from Bhutan. Seed, so it's totally different because they said once they reach here, the the Japanese uh, institute here will help you and look after you know to provide a good job, and uh, some students they are not given any help, but I believe that some are given a job which is uh, directly uh, given into a factory job, which is a uh, they face very difficult time in that, and. Uh, after that, uh, without any help from the agent from both the side, from here and from the Bhutan. So the students, they have started looking for their own job. And they started working, and as well as they uh, go to school. Uh, the, the main problem about our parents and the students is uh, uh, we just came here to find it out by coming here actually by you know ourselves. Because uh, staying back home and we are just you know listening to everyone. Uh, so when you when you tell the people that they generally don't believe that because so uh, personally we don't we are not here that way, and we have met a couple of uh, students uh, and uh, 
we interacted with them and we talked and uh, uh, we had some uh, feedbacks uh, form that which we are you know, doing with the students. So now the prime main problem is that now the, uh, the students here, they work, uh, some is working part time and uh, they are unable to pay the loan back home because uh, the money was is, is, is not that uh, easy. Uh, and uh, all the parents, what we uh, thought was when they was, was given a loan of uh, seven lakhs. So we thought from there, they want to uh, help the students with that uh, money. But later we find it out that uh, seven, from 707 uh, lakhs, they are given only uh, 65,000 each to the student when they uh, you know, uh, came to Japan. So we even raised the question that where, where, where the rest of the money is gone. And uh, we parents thought that uh, from whatever the loan that appeal, you know, appeal for the students, they have to manage from there. But it was totally different when you heard here. When the students, they came here and after starting a, a work, they have to pay their own f tuition fee and uh, they have to pay their dormitory fees. And, uh, and I believe that uh, we heard that the students, they, when they reach here, they are placed into a one small room with the six or seven people together. So which is uh, very uh, difficult for them. But the agent took uh, uh, the uh, dormitory uh, fees from each student, those who are staying together in one room. Like suppose uh, if there's uh, five or six students there, so per, he per head they have taken, uh, uh, how much is it, one like 20? Yeah, I guess something like one like twenty yen from each of the uh, uh, the students, even though these uh, the place was very congested, very uh, uh, uncomfortable, very small. So they uh, put it in that kind of uh, place. Where welcoming the uh, the agent promised that they no, they will be given a good accommodation, and uh, they will be. Uh, be, I mean, look for the good job. So some students, when they came here, they faced a lot of uh, difficult time because of the uh, language gap and, uh, and uh, some doesn't even have much money after paying the, the they have to pay advance the house rent and everything. So uh, they, they try to work for two, two, work, two jobs. But uh, unfortunately, uh, there's one girl that who was caught by uh, immigration, and she was deported back to uh, Bhutan. And uh, and one guy after uh, Mr. Sonam Topke, uh, he committed suicide. And uh, we still don't know whether it is a suicide or whether it's a murder case, uh, because uh, that I think might our law lawyer explains later, because uh, uh, since he knows everything. We are just cross-checked, and uh, the, the the main problem of uh, our visit now is regarding the loan. And I, even as the president, I told uh, all the parents just now. We have almost around uh, 500 parents together because we form a group, and the parents back home are not that. Uh, some are rich, of course. They pay their children's loan, and they those. Students are just uh, are working here and uh, having an easy life. It's just because they don't have to pay the loan back home. They are, it is paid by their uh, parents. But the many of them are unable to pay just because the uh, parents, are, some, most of the parents, they, are, uh, they don't have work. Uh, they are from a very uh, poor back background and uh, no income at all, the source of income. So they could not pay the loan. Neither the uh, students from here, they could send uh, money to back to, uh, to their parents to pay the loan when they are difficult to sustain themselves here. So the, uh, the main thing that we have really wanted to uh, say is that we wanted to investigate uh, our agent in Bhutan and our the, the Japanese agent here in uh, uh, here in Japan, 
how they have uh, really uh, treated and how they go against uh, whatever uh, it was written in the agreement. So uh, we are yet to, uh, get, you know, I tried to uh, meet with a couple of uh, students again. And uh, as far off now, we have met around 74, well, 72, 74 students in within two days. And uh, with the help of ma'am, uh, we have been, uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, as soon as we reach the uh, airport, we directly have to go to a meeting without changing everything, and we got our luggage only yesterday. <laughs> so, um, but we are very happy to be here, and uh, I wish to thank uh, uh, Ms. Jimmy Kokan, and uh, uh, there's some, uh, some of our friends too, and then we have to uh, thank our parents that who is uh, uh, who contributed for our uh, coming coming to Japan. So ours is totally uh, not from the government. We just came here as the parents and the lawyer as a private. So um, I will suggest that we. Uh, won't be able to give any uh, sensitive questions regarding our the government because government uh, of course they, they told us that they will send a committee uh, from here to study the uh, uh, to investigate what's really happening here but I think it's taking a long time and uh, we really don't know that when they are coming so most of the students now they wanted to go back because their visa is uh, getting expired and uh, uh, I believe that agents have uh, promised them if it, the course is for one year, they will uh, renew the license, I mean, uh, the, the visa, and then I, still they can go on and uh, work and uh, study. But it, it's not happening now because uh, if they have to renew the uh, visa, the school uh, asking for the fees of uh, it differs from school to school. Uh, some schools, they are charging like uh, uh, three lakhs yen per student to renew the uh, visa. And uh, actually, it is to be uh, done by the uh, our agent in Bhutan and the agent here in Japan. But now, a student has even wrote uh, to the uh, uh, agent in Bhutan. But so far, they didn't get any uh, reply to any information. So most of them are facing a problem just because now they are getting scared. So much of loan has been, you know, avail in their name. And uh, if they go back, uh, they won't be having any job and how, is, how they're going to repay the uh, loan. So uh, we are, uh, as, as a, as a parents president, and I just uh, spoke with every uh, uh, parents that as of now, the government signed to uh, defer the loan, but I don't know when they're going, they're going to do. So as of now, uh, I told all the parents not to uh, pay the loan just now. For time being, let me uh, stop it for a while, because we really wanted to know that what uh, when the government is going to defer the loan, or if they defer the loan, is it with the interest? Because. Uh, if they defer the loan, and if you have to uh, pay the interest again, then it uh, doesn't make any sense. You know, the uh, the interest keeps on going high. So that's the problem that uh, we parents and the students are facing just now. So anything that uh, uh, lawyer, and that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're going to hear from um, Mr. Tubge, uh, who is the legal officer of the Parents Committee of the Learn and Earn Program Victims. Uh, <clears throat> good morning to all. Uh, first of all, I convey my warm regards to and acknowledgement uh, on my own behalf and on behalf of our <clears throat> on behalf of our King and the people of Bhutan to the people of Japan for supporting our Bhutanese students who came here through Earn and Learn program. Now, before I go into uh, my main point, I want to introduce myself. My name is Ngawang Topge. I work as a private lawyer in Bhutan. I'm very passionate about standing up for 
the rights and the protection of protecting of those people whose uh, uh, protecting those people in society whose uh, who are marginalized and where those uh, whose interests are not uh, represented in the mainstream and main, uh, mainstream community. In this current situation, uh, with regards to Earn and Learn program, I'm standing for those Buddhist youth who are affected by this program. I think uh, almost uh, all the issues uh, has been highlighted by our president, committee president. I will <coughs> not uh, go in details about the issues, but I just want to brief. I, I just want to give a brief summary about the issues and what is happening here, and why we are here in Japan. The main issue uh, was because of agent. We have uh, uh, unemployment pr uh, problems in Bhutan. We really have uh, serious unemployment issues in Bhutan. And the past government initiated this earn and learn program so that they can reduce the unemployment rates in Bhutan. But the agent who initiated this program, Bhutan Employment Overseas, BEO, we call it as BEO. They firstly misled the government. They knew about the programs. They know about the Earn and Learn programs. I'm sure most of you uh, are aware of what is Earn and Learn program, but it's very new in our country. The, those uh, people, agents who are running this Bhutan employment overseas, his name is uh, Jurmi Seong, and I think, uh, I, yes, of course, it's true that he's married to a Japanese girl called Aoki. And they know very well about this earn and learn program. Despite knowing everything, they misguided, misrepresented, misled our youths. They are suffering now. They give very uh, beautiful <coughs> dreams. They have promised a lot to them. Actually, the loan uh, payment should be, uh, they, have the, uh, they have five years to pay back their loan. I did 700,000 neutrum. It's equivalent to rupees again. And uh, I'm sure that uh, most of us, uh, of you all, 700,000 is nothing for you, but for our country, for our people of Bhutan, especially those parents whose students are uh, working here, are all from, maximum of them are from poor background. They are misrepresented, misguided. They are very new to this uh, country. They, th those uh, agent promised everything and when the, they reach, arrived in Japan, the things is totally different. Things are totally different. Those agent, like we, I will name the agent. Agent name is, first, firstly they have introduced as a light path something, a co-limited. Now they have changed to SND. I don't know whether their office exists or not. They just, after, they are just after their commission, not after the welfare of students. And now, at this, uh, I think it's been now uh, more than two years, uh, students who are here in Japan, now they knew about the system, they knew about the place, they are trying to adapt themselves, they are trying to look job for themselves, a better jobs. Now, they are, uh, regretting how they are misguided or misled by the agent. They have been uh, taken to a very worse uh, weather condition, very worse uh, place where to work and pay this, they paid very less. So those are the uh, things which are not taken care by the agent uh, here in Japan. And uh, Forget about the commission from the Gakos schools. They even took commission from mobile phone, iPhone. They are forced to buy iPhone from, I don't know which company or I don't know which. 
they are forced to buy. And they have to pay installment basis monthly. Actually, now they are saying that we get this uh, phone at 90,000 yen or 80,000 yen. I think now they are paying, in, when it comes to installment basis, they have to pay for two years. Monthly, they have to pay 10,000 yen, 15,000 yen for two years. So forget about those other big commissions. They even took commission from our uh, mobile phones. So these are the main issues that is happening. And in details, I, our president already highlighted. Now, I want to just uh, read out something which uh, Sonam Topge, the one who uh, committed suicide, he, uh, in his regard. The tragedy of losing a boy named Sonam Tovge on 4th December 2018 is still a mystery to many people in Bhutan, especially his humble parents back at home. The cause of death is reportedly claimed as suicide, but the parents of the boy are suffering to know, struggling to know if it is really true, like if the son has really committed suicide. Of course, the parents were handed over with the post-mortem report saying that the cause of death is suicide or hanging. But from those people who handled the body during cremation, the parents learned that the boy had several injuries on his head. They also found out that the boy had lost all his lower teeth and the scars on his ankle. All the ankle bones were broken which is unlikely in the case of suicide. Moreover, back in Bhutan, we have a religious belief of believing after death, after death spirit. Of course, they cannot be, it, uh, this cannot be proven as evidence in court or anywhere, but I'll share it. But according to the boy's parent, the spirit of boy said himself that he did not suicide, but he was being murdered by nine people. Learning about all the injuries in the boy's body and spirit, the parents are still with the mentality that their son could have been murdered rather than suicide, and they want justice on it. Similarly, from an, uh, another anonymous source, we have learned that the suicide note left by a boy actually isn't his own handwriting. The handwriting left on the suicide note and his actual handwriting is mismatching. In addition, the place where the boy has claimed to suicide is one of the, one of the park which is usually crowded with the people. There, there is no possibilities that boy can die there. Further upon the request and a plea from Tobge's family to know the investigation report from the Japanese police, our counterpart here, uh, Madam Yumiko Khan, visited the police force, but they denied to reveal the detail about the investigation report. Therefore, the parents of deceased has enough reason to claim that they were, they want to know the real cause of their son's death and want justice over it. So that's the detail thing about uh, our Sonam Tobge, who lost his life on uh, 24th December. Now, I just want to brief, short, uh, brief about our visit here in Japan. We, here, we are here to find the ground reality, main crux of the issue. What is the, why, why, where the truth is hidden. We are going here and there meeting students and within two days we are able to meet 74. We have three sets of, uh, two sets of survey form. One, one is named as survey questionnaires. Second is status of employment. And we found out that there is a serious breach of contact between agent and students. And third one is those students who are back to Bhutan wants to file a case against uh, the agent Bhutan employment overseas. And I'm representing them in court. Uh, as per uh, our Bhutan's judiciary procedure, we have to follow on, uh, we have to fill up on form 
where they can represent, it's called as right to jame, right to lawyers. Jame is in our language. So for that one reason, one set of uh, paper will be about if, if, even if they are interested to file a case along with the students, those who are in Bhutan, they can uh, f uh, s sign from here and I can take back the, with, the, uh, with this uh, feedback forms. So that's the main purpose we are here and to be, are, we wish to meet almost all the students, each and every students, and I think tomorrow we are traveling to uh, Sendai and uh, Fukushima, Fukushima. Yeah. So that's all from my side, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tokai. That was very interesting. Um, okay, so finally we have um, Yumiko Khan, who's the representative of Nature and Humans Japan, which is an NGO. Thank you very much, Kansa. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you very much for coming for this uh, conference. And then we, uh, the Bhutan student in Japan has a lot of problems. One, one person, uh, Sonam Tobe, suicide or murdered. And another one is she, ha she has tuberculosis and then that's hit her brain. And then she's in coma from last October. And then, uh, then it is quite difficult that she will recover. So even if she recover, she will have severe disabilities. And also we have more than 20, uh, 20 tuberculosis patients among the Bhutanese students. And then the, uh, I guess uh, this caused by the uh, the poor immune system caused by the poor living condition and hard work at midnight and also uh, uh, mental, mental stress. And then this kind of, uh, they are really uh, living in a hard, hard condition. And then I, I was afraid that some, some person may suicide. And then unfortunately it happened. And then we are still at risk that similar things will happen in the future. And then, uh, but the, the BEO, the agent, agent in Bhutan, agent in Japan are denying about this fact. Uh, so they are saying that only 50% of the students is having hard time in Japan. 85% of the students are doing okay, but they are not doing okay. That's why we are here to make research what is happening here. Uh, plus that they have a huge debt. And uh, in Bhutan, the high official of the Bhutanese government gets only three to 500 US dollar. And then what they have borrowed, uh, their debt is more than uh, 10,000 10, US dollar, more than 10,000 US dollar, which if we compare uh, the salary of the Bhutanese people and then the debts that uh, you will know how big it is. And then this, uh, this heavy debt is really burdened on, uh, it's getting really burdened. And then the, for these debts, and also to pay the tuition of the Japanese language school, they are working day and night, day and night. Unfortunately, they have to work illegally because 28 hours working is not enough to sustain the life in Japan also to pay tuition, which cost about hachiju mayen. It's about 7,000 US dollar per year. And then the, in this way that the Bhutanese student is having really hard time here. And then uh, now they are, uh, they are end of the Japanese language school study. Some, uh, some student cannot pay the tuition. And then the, for the who couldn't pay the tuition, the Japanese language school is taking away the passport from them, this, which is illegal. 
And then as long as no four schools are taking away the passport from the Bhutanese students. There, I think this is a really serious problem. And then the one, <coughs> one in Chiba, one in, uh, one in Kobe, one in Osaka, one in Fukuoka. Uh, and also that's uh, in this way that whole the system of the Japanese language school and then broker's system is really sucking the Bhutanese <coughs> students. And then they, uh, it is quite hard for them to survive in Japan and then they are in despair. And also they were threatened by the agent and the Japanese language school and they even to uh, the government. They were threatened if they speak up that they will, they will be in blacklist and then they will never get the job in, in Bhutan and, and they also their family will never get the job. In this way that they are threatened and then that's why they cannot, uh, they cannot speak up. So, uh, so we really have to, we are here to make a research what is happening among the Bhutanese students and then we try to f we like to try to find try to find the solution for them. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Uh, as uh, uh, Madam has mentioned regarding the uh, documents that, uh, uh, especially the passport, which was, you know, taken by the uh, agent here. Uh, the passport is the main uh, document that which we need. And uh, I think in every country, it is illegal to take the passport of somebody's uh, and then keep it with them. So same thing, uh, like the uh, BU agent back in Bhutan, they have taken all the, uh, the students' documents with them, the or original documents with them. And some students, they cannot, uh, after they did uh, three or four months training, uh, the basic training in Japanese in, uh, in Bhutan, where they have to pay uh, 5,000 um, Newton, our, our currency. And um, there are a few students that they could not make uh, to Japan. They could not come here. But when they went back to get their documents, uh, and I believe that uh, the, the agent BEU and the, uh, our labor ministry, uh, they have charged, uh, if they want the documents back, they have to pay uh, uh, one girl, sh she was told that uh, they, she had to pay uh, uh, two lakhs our our Newton to get back the uh, documents. And there's uh, one boy, uh, he was told that uh, yeah, he should give uh, pay uh, 50,000 to get his documents, uh, the original documents and the passport back from the BEO. So the same thing, it, it was happened here, but uh, when we had a meeting with the Prime Minister and the uh, uh, Labour Ministry back home, so we, uh, we, we talked about that, and the Prime Minister agreed that uh, the documents should be given back. They are not allowed to hold it. But whatever it is, uh, the, the guy that who went to Labour Ministry to get the, uh, with the application saying that uh, he wanted to uh, but documents back. The labor ministry uh, then forwarded them saying, go to the agent and get the, uh, the documents. But uh, when they went back, uh, I think they approached more than three to four times. And uh, they was not given. They eventually said that, you know, they have to pay and then only. But the last thing is that the, the student and the father approach uh, me uh, as the parents representative. Uh, and uh, I, I told the uh, parents to go to uh, the uh, prime minister office, where he himself has said that you know the documents shouldn't be uh, uh, you know keep there. So I sent him there, and the, uh, he could not meet with the prime minister. Then uh, I told him to talk with the uh, prime minister PA. But unfortunately, the the prime minister PA is also on leave. I think she has gone somewhere and. Uh, uh, 
his son was about to leave for uh, interview, and that we we need this uh, uh, the original documents. So later, then he, I suggest him to meet with the cabinet secretary. So we, it was very grateful that our cabinet secretary helped, and he called the labor ministry and talked with them, and then he talked with the BEO, and that is how that we uh, he got his original document documents back without paying him money. The same thing is happening here also. That uh, it, I believe the quite up to uh, last time uh, with the help of Madam and. Uh, that uh, I don't know which lawyer or something, the one who got, got the passport from Gaku or Inchba? yeah, uh, there's uh, there's one guy that uh, his passports were held by the uh, school, so with the help of her they went to that school and then uh, uh, they inform and they. Uh, said regarding the, uh, you know, it's illegal to keep all those things. So uh, he got his passport back. And most of the uh, students, they really uh, wanted to come back, but uh, uh, some students are still uh, asking us to, you know, uh, get their documents. I, I believe, uh, I don't know how many students uh, have their documents with the, uh, the agent here. But uh, there are a few students that who approached me and saying that they wanted uh, the documents back, so that way they can go back uh, to Bhutan with the documents. So uh, it's just regarding about that uh, the, the documents, yeah. and thank you very much for that. Thank you. Okay, so this is clearly a very important issue, a very important story. So I'd love for everyone to have an opportunity to ask questions. Um, so. If you have a question, we're going to start with the working press, um, and uh, please raise your hand, and then we'll go to the non-working press and let us know your name and where you're from. Yes, down here. Hi, um, Ilgin Yorulmaz, freelancer for BBC World Turkish Language Service. I'm very sorry for your loss, and uh, thank you for being here today. Um, can you just tell us? those of us who are not so familiar with earn and learn, what is it exactly one year of studying Japanese and then can they work or not? And also, um, in the case of Sonam especially, what kind of jobs do um, the Bhutanese students do and where are they um, distributed um, in Japan? Thank you. Uh, I already, earlier I have said that earn and learn is very new uh, in our country, but uh, from the definition itself we can make out that earn and learn is you have, you can earn and then also uh, learn something from here. And uh, earn and learn, uh, the current students who are in Japan are now, some are working in food processing. First, the initial period they were being placed in some, uh, I think, uh, meat, meat shop. Something like they have yeah. to work in the uh, ice. Uh, they have been cold. placed uh, minus 15 degree in, in the factories and uh, even they don't get chance to see the uh, sky. So these are the working conditions during the initial period. Now, after knowing about the uh, situation, after knowing about the uh, places, they are having a bit, bit good conditions job, like they are working with, uh, working for uh, some shops as a uh, caretaker, as a caretaker for old uh, people. And uh, I think now they are having a good uh, life. But before, their working condition was very bad. They are misguided, and by uh, even uh, I heard that some companies uh, offered them a good job, but those agents discouraged them from doing that job because that those agents did not give a commission to the agent. So they enrolled them their students where they get commission. So they discourage uh, even uh, offers uh, from uh, good companies. Now th only they knew about this uh, uh, victimized, which is hap which happened at the initial period. 
which was which they were exploited by agent. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Do we have more questions from the press or others? What? One answer that the oh, students are students are in Sendai, Fukushima, uh, Tokyo, Chiba, uh, <laughs> Osaka, Kobe, Fukuoka. The 23 schools they are learning, right? Uh, 20, uh, 23 schools, I'm sorry that I forget, Okinawa too. So the, uh, so they go to different, uh, different Japanese language school. So it's quite difficult to make a research. Thank you. Okay, thank you, I apologize for cutting you off. Okay, yes, please. Please tell us your name and where you're from. Thanks. Hi, my name is Makoto Iwahashi, and I'm a freelance journalist. And I'd like to ask one question. Is um, uh, I heard that you mentioned that you're uh, bringing up a lawsuit against the agency in Bhutan. But um, do you plan on doing uh, taking on any actions against the Japanese schools that are accepting these students, and also the um, employers that are hiring these students on the conditions that they have to pay, you know, um, margins to the schools to hire these um, students in order to exploit um, these student workers. Thank you. You mean to say that we have to take, we want to take action to Japanese schools? Uh, yeah, so I'm asking whether you're thinking about <coughs> taking any kind of action against the schools that are accepting these students, and also the the employers that are you know hiring these students by paying the schools. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, we uh, after we are, our lawyer we hired him, and uh, we were just trying to uh, uh, fill up the case as a, as a civil case with the BU in a, back in the agent in Bhutan. So the, the purpose here with the agent here in Japan, uh, we have not, uh, is there not judiciary, so we can't do anything here. That's why we wanted the uh, help from the Japanese people, to, you know, to uh, write something or anything that, you know, we can uh, come up with something. And then uh, if if there's any possible way that they can uh, talk with the uh, the agent here, those who have uh, uh, treated these students very badly, and uh, as mentioned by the lawyer, that uh, uh, initially when they came here, if they were provided with a little bit of good job where they can uh, work and uh, earn a little bit, but uh, as he mentioned, that they all work with the commission and. Uh, Wherever there is the uh, uh, the easy job, like where they can, uh, uh, you know, they put them, they put the students there, like in the factories or any kind of thing. So from there, where they get the uh, commission, the agent get commission from the, those uh, factories uh, owners and uh, students there's who wanted to work with the other other company that where they got their own job by themselves. So they are, they are not allowed to do it because they don't get commission from there. And uh, yes, the, the lawsuit is now we are, after finding from here, the uh, after meeting all the uh, students here, and then the, uh, we need to, more or less, uh, we need more uh, evidence. And uh, back, when we reach back uh, to Bhutan, uh, with the help of all the students back back feet uh, and the uh, uh, he's going to you know the, the, he put put up the keys and as far as like I requested that uh, uh, the agent here and the uh, most of the uh, the Bhutanese people they really can't raise the voice because uh, uh, everybody knows that our country is very small and uh, uh, we still have a king. And uh, we are not allowed to, you know, protest. Protest. Uh, we are not allowed to do all this thing, kind of thing. And uh, if, uh, like, uh, Ma'am has already uh, written a couple of uh, uh, articles on the uh, how the Buddhist students are suffering here, 
uh, in Facebook and uh, in the uh, uh, paper too. So if more and more the, uh, uh, if uh, the all of uh, you can write something about the, uh, how this trail has been treated and how the, uh, the BU agent and the Japanese agents have treated them. So when it, uh, everything comes up, so more and more people, when they read uh, uh, the paper, I think that it will be uh, more easy for us to uh, uh, talk with the government back uh, uh, in Bhutan too. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just to add on his point, uh, taking action against uh, school in Japan, uh, it's not possible for us. We don't have the jurisdiction to file a case here. But back home, we are we have the right, we have the jurisdiction to file a case against our agent. So we want to do this, and we are following the procedures. And for now, we are uh, asking signatures of students to file a case when I reach back home. And uh, but I'm very glad and happy to meet uh, one lawyer here in Japan who is uh, very senior and famous, who always uh, raises his voice for uh, foreign workers. And I'm yeah. sure with him we can do something from there. That's all. Yes, thank uh, you. I would like to. Uh, I would like to in introduce uh, Mr. Ibuski. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Ibusuki agreed to become advisor of their parents' group. And then the, he, uh, he knows about the uh, foreign workers' programs. So we, co we cooperate together to solve the problems. And then the, we, uh, it is my opinion that we, uh, it is quite difficult to sue the Japanese language school and also the company because they are doing this business quite it, it's it's not it, it it's not quite illegal they are taking commission legally <laughs> or something so it's not quite easy to sue the Japanese language school and the company but uh, my opinion we may sue the Japanese site broker called SND the a Bhutanese broker and then Japanese broker work together, and then the Bhutanese broker send but, uh, students to Japan, and the SND receive receive the students, and then they posted uh, Bhutanese students to the companies. They provided job. Uh, even the there is a contracts uh, there is a contracts uh, which was. Signed with BO, uh, BO and the students, there is a name of Light Pass and SND, and the SND is has to pre, uh, has to take care of the students in Japan, <coughs> but they they have hardly helped the Bhutanese students. So, uh, in my opinion, that uh, we may, we may sue the SND. I'd like to put one more thing. That, I'm sorry for that. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, the same thing like the the BU agent back in Bhutan and the uh, agent here. Uh, we don't have much uh, the original receipt or the uh, the visa fee receipt, and it is uh, all manipulated. And when we went and asked for the uh, uh, BU office to get the uh, the original receipt for whatever they uh, did for the students or, or the visa fee, how much, uh, you know, I, I believe they've charged uh, uh, more than uh, what is supposed to be. And uh, our, when we came here, our visa fee just for two of us is uh, 4,800, right? 4,800 yen. So for those students, they don't know anything. This is all done by the uh, done by the agent at BO, so uh, they have been charged a little bit high. And uh, every time we go to the BO office, we ask for the uh, the parents when we ask for the original receipt that we want, and what what really has done with the money. So they d they don't even have uh, that uh, original receipt to give us. So uh, the same thing. They when they when we asked them, they said they have to uh, 
<coughs> you know, uh, talk with the agent here. And the agent here, they are not sending. Uh, in the middle, I think they are just, you know, uh, uh, making us to mislead. They, are, they say they, have, they are talking from here, and they, from there, we are not getting these things. So it's a little bit uh, complicated. And uh, the, if we have that, uh, all the original receipt, that how much money and how they have spent and how they, where they are put, so it will be uh, easy for us to uh, uh, see that, uh, you know, uh, to, to know that uh, where the money has uh, really gone, the uh, seven lakhs which have uh, appeared alone from the government bank. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Um, okay, we have time for maybe one or two more questions, if there are any. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you for your, your presentation. My name is Kenta Ijin, working for the Asa Shinbun, uh, Japan's daily newspaper. My question is about responsibility of ministries in Bhutan and Japan. Do you have any ideas that Japanese like, labor ministry has a responsibility for this program? Because you said that the land and arm program was introduced by Bhutan uh, ministry, labor ministry. So there is something, the connection between Japanese government and Bhutan government. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I'm not sure about the Ministry of Labor uh, here in Japan, but uh, in my country, the main uh, program is this Earn and Learn program is initiated by our Ministry of Labor in order to reduce the unemployment rate in Bhutan. And uh, Ministry is very aware about this uh, program. And I'm sure, I, I think that agent who uh, initiated this program misled our, even our uh, Ministry of Labor. They have an uh, I just want to uh, tell about a detail about that. Firstly, the BEO agent sent two batches, the 67 and 62, uh, first and second batch. Once they reach here, they had a tough time and they are not able to pay back what they have borrowed from the loan. So the next package they got was 380 students again, third batch. But the government will, uh, government will, uh, of course, cross-check what, uh, what had happened uh, for first and second batch. And BEO students collected registration fee of 380 students. They have voluntarily paid loan monthly installment for first and second batch and misled our government by saying that those students who are there are doing fine. They are paying their loans on time. That's why government approved that third batch. So, but now, uh, I'm sure some senior officials, senior bureaucrats from our uh, labor minister are also uh, involved in the, this. And of course, our con uh, country's anti-corruption commission is, uh, has already done their investigation and it's uh, passed on to uh, attorney general for a uh, case. So for now, everything is uh, closed. <coughs> they will, uh, even the BO offices, so, uh, license is suspended for now, and uh, uh, let's see how the Attorney General proves uh, that about uh, ACC's report. And uh, it, they will file a case against ACC, and ACC instructed uh, government to track and take administrative action against those uh, high officials. So I'm sure the justice will come. But from our side, from parents' side, they want to file a civil case against the agent breach of contact. That's all. So I'm not sure about Japanese uh, foreign labor minister, I'm sorry, labor ministry's role here in this program. And, uh, I, just, I just forgot to mention that uh, uh, the SND agent, which uh, the ma'am talked about, uh, we heard that uh, they are doing illegally. And uh, now the students, when they went to uh, look for their office, uh, they could, the previous office is closed and nobody is there now. So, which means uh, the BU, BU in our 
town agent and the uh, SND agent here, they have, uh, uh, I believe that uh, Jurmit Sewong, the owner, one of the owner, he, he is very fluent in Japanese and he has stayed for, here for a long time and married with a Japanese uh, uh, woman. So uh, he got an idea from here, I guess. And uh, the talk with the SND, and uh, that's how they uh, came up with the Earn and Learn in, in Bhutan. And it's very new to us. And uh, when you reach here, when you ask about SND, uh, the agent, they, most of the students, they went back to see where the office is, but there's no office at all now. So that's the problem that we, we're going to find that those uh, things. Thank you. Thank you. Are there more questions? OK. You can have one more, then. <laughs> yes, please. Um, we've had um, Chinese and some other nationals uh, here who had been mistreated the same way as uh, the Bhutanese students. It seems like, from what you explain, uh, the brokerage system, the, these brokers, is the problem. Now, Japan is inviting 360. 50,000 more foreign workers uh, from April, in fact, as soon as April. What do you want this broker system to be replaced with? What is the ideal? Could maybe the Japanese government give loans to these students, perhaps, and not these brokers, or the, even the Bhutanese government? What is your opinion, any one of you? Thank you. About this new scheme. Uh, on 22nd, we uh, got a chance to meet with the Ministry of Justice. There, they introduced about uh, new visa schemes have, uh, assigned with nine, nine countries, and they're still waiting for Bhutan government to uh, have a memorandum. I think if uh, this Earn and Learn program is, uh, it will be beautiful if there is no brokers. And now, even with this, so many serious issues, I'm sure that uh, government of Japan they will come out, uh, they will come out of way to uh, protect and uh, f uh, work for the welfare of foreigners who are still uh, who wants to work uh, here in Japan and who are still working here in Japan. And uh, I'm pretty <coughs> sure that government in Japan will plan uh, plan such a way that. The current issues uh, will be not be happening uh, in next uh, such as new schemes. Thank you. Uh, as um, the madam has mentioned about the Chinese and other students from the uh, other country, uh, I think there's uh, students coming from India and Nepal, uh, and some form. Uh, uh, they have been charged only uh, the, uh, two lakhs rupees. Uh, three lakhs just to you know come here to learn and earn, but ways in Bhutan they have charged more than that, which is uh, as I explained earlier it's uh, seven lakhs. So there's a lot of thought. I mean the gap that between uh, uh, the Bhutan and the uh, uh, those strains from India and uh, Nepal, and uh, even the students here the. Uh, Ask a Bhutanese uh, student that how much, why you guys are paying all this this much, and they have no answer for that because they already asked by the agent to pay this much. So we have even asked the uh, agent back in Bhutan, you know, uh, some uh, the countries uh, which came through un learn and earn program, they pay only uh, two lakhs or three lakhs, and why our you know the Bhutanese uh, students have to pay seven lakhs. But uh, we didn't get any uh, uh, the right answer uh, yet. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so the, it's. I think the Japanese government should en uh, should ensure the working visa for the foreigners, which is equal to Japanese people make sure the same condition, same condition, same payment with same uh, labor, labor regulation that should be done. That's uh, uh, 
um, then that I I, I really concerned about this this uh, this kind of tragedy may spread after the after they start uh, this new regulation. There are uh, there are very few people. Uh, there are very few officials and also NGO to take care of the uh, take care of the foreign workers in Japan. And uh, I think that's uh, the, this is only the but uh, we are talking about the Bhutanese student today. But this uh, same pro uh, uh, same problem is happening in for uh, Vietnam, Myanmar. Uh, Nepal, other countries. Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. I think that's a good place to leave it. I'd like to thank our panelists very much for coming today and calling attention to this really important issue. And I hope, I hope it gets the attention it deserves. So thank you very much, and let's all thank them. Before I get it, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. If you we, need to, uh, uh, I'll just say to see that you know the. Uh, the Bhutan government and Japanese government, we uh, have a very good relationship, and uh, we are doing uh, very good uh, both the uh, countries. And, uh, and there, just because of these uh, few um, agent and few people in Bhutan, and uh, people from uh, like this kind of agent and the people from both the countries, uh, they are trying to make the uh, reputations a little bit, uh, you know, trying to make the reputation down. And um, we, we Bhutanese are all very grateful for all the uh, uh, the Japanese help, and uh, even our, the king and uh, the government. Uh, uh, mostly, that we get help is from the Japan go Japanese government. So uh, the just because of the few. Uh, People, like I said, the boat from Japan and boat from the uh, Bhutan, uh, the, both the countries' name, you know, it, it's it's still time to uh, bring a bad reputation to the countries. So, as as far as we're concerned, we have nothing to uh, say about the Japanese government and our, our uh, Bhutan government. They are, they they have a good relationship. So only our uh, aim here is to uh, uh, to get the justice for the. Uh, the parents and the students of the uh, learning on program. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you again for coming, and thank you to our panel.